Oh yeah, I definitely gotta hate it. Yeah, I haven't been keeping up too well with the commercials. I don't watch the no, like, cable television anymore. Gotcha. But the Bell song, it was, it wasn't bad. I kind of liked it just for the, the, the song and the vibe they were going for. I liked it. The Bell of B, Cardi B reference, that was really cool too. Right. And also we got featured some new live shows also, as in the Chucky Cha Cha, the River Zomba Frank Akonka, and Winter Wonder Dance. So when Chucky Cha Cha first came out, I, I, I was obsessed with that song, and I loved it. I, I still am. I love listening to it on full blast. It's just a really energetic. We've been needing a, an energetic live show for Chucky for the longest. It's a it's a mere parody of the catch up song from Just Dance, so I automatically knew exactly what it was. The dance move is fun, the song is fun, just everything about it is fun. I thought he was gonna say it's like it reminds it reminds you of, like living the Viga Volca, because a lot of fans like, really did say that around that time too. That it got that, you know, that Ricky Martin vibe or S fans are like I would call the song drinking a Coca Cola. Oh yeah, that's another one that it also sounds like too. Remember the first time hearing it? It was really good, you know. I, I love that live show. It's even better when it's on stages that have light programming, because the programming in general for it on the three stages is just amazing. Right. And also, um, you know, I gotta say this. Show 3 was actually one of my favorites, one of my favorite shows. And I remember going down to my local, seeing Show 3, seeing my family in person, just, you know, was a good, was a good favorite memory that I love. Show 3 was my favorite show from this year, because that's when it kicked off with the bio song. Uh, that was just, that was just getting its foot in the door. That was just the, the start of diversifying the content that goes on the channel. I think that's a good start of where they're headed. Right. So the, the schedule of post a skit here, post a skit, and every now and then a live show, way more diversified content. So things like Unicorn, Unicorn. Oh, yeah, Action Unicorn. Yeah, the Unicorn song, man. I haven't listened to that one in a while, but it was kind of surprising to see your Unicorn Mad into the song. Oh, yeah, I wasn't expecting a Matt Daniel reference, but right. he threw himself in there. Right, and uh, it was also a little bitty kitty cat, too. Um, well, there's two different versions. The YouTube version, and then there was the version that was actually on the disc or the USB for the show inside the store. So, my opinion on little bitty kitty cat, overall, I don't like it, because it's, it's just not me. It's not meant for me. It's, it's for the little kids on me. Right. But... The, the version that they played in the store wasn't that bad, but the, the version they posted on YouTube and the one that they put on their Instagram, it just, I don't know, because the, the little kid's voice is just girlishly high-pitched, it's just annoying to, to put it to the point. Not only that, it has been reused once again in Show 4 2019. Oh, yeah, for cat sitting. Yes. I, I had a problem with that one, actually. I had a problem with that song. It's just... I'll be real. Oh. Is it horrible? I don't like it, personally. It's not the greatest skit. Right. The thing that makes me like cat sitting is the music when Pasquale's doing his verses. That's the only real thing that I actually like, is the music. Um, I, I was gonna say is I really don't celebrate the holidays a lot, actually. And you know, with this Halloween show, it's like, okay, yeah, new Halloween show, awesome, cool. I hear casting, I'm like, okay, what? You know, what really surprised me is the music. Yes, I do agree. I like how that we finally get to hear Copernicus talk after like for a good some years, and Steve Waters finally comes back into the show again. But like. When it comes to casting, it's like, okay, what? Is this a Halloween song, or is this something, like, weird? Because songs like Just Be Yourself, and I Didn't Need to Be Afraid, and Pumpkin Patch. Yeah, you can... That's easily good Halloween songs right there off the back. Right. I love, I love, I really love the art direction that they went with 
that they're going with the Halloween show, specifically with Pumpkin Patch and Just Be Yourself, those kind of jazzy type songs. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. And they also did a new, uh, they also released some albums, which not on Spotify anymore, fans. <laughs> and Matt Daniels said they had to do a little work on. I think it's the first album they did. I don't know why I took off the Halloween one, but, um, but there's only one album that's still on Spotify, and you can also find it on YouTube. It's Happy, Happy Holidays, and that one's one of my favorites, actually. And of course, when show five came around, a new holiday show came in. Which, winner of Dance. Yes. With a new live show, Winner Winner Dance, it's, it was better than Where Was Zamba Frank and Conga. Even though I liked the last one because all the Rockstar characters was in there. Yeah, that's true. I, I, I wonder how World, uh, Winner Winter Dance would have been with all the characters as well. Right. I, in the music video, they don't really have, they wouldn't have much of a place out of their big background dance so. mm -hmm. um, But the new holiday show is really nice. It's it's a, it's a good good holiday spirit, you know. I like how in this one we get to see the return of Munch Jr. as Munch's little little siblings, who are well behaved for uh, Zappa's Gorba. Zorba Dark Glorba. Right, Zorba Dark Glorba. Oh, that's only stuck in my head now, actually. Yeah, I, trust me, I work at Chuck E. Cheese. I work long, eight-hour shifts. I, I, I know the struggle. Yeah, definitely. And hearing that album, too, it's like, oh, man. But I like how, you know, the album also itself got some re-recorded songs from, you know, uh, from 2012. And... Of course, you might not see that a lot back into the show anymore, but, you know, it's it was a good idea of what our future might be looking like for 2020. Right. I mean, they, they reworked some of those songs, and they spent production costs. Huh? They might possibly make an appearance in future Halloween, uh, holiday show tapes. Right. The only thing is, it's definitely possible, and that thing you said, never say never. But, um... Right. You never know what, what they might decide to do. Right. You know, they might... Finally, you know, maybe next year, put back the costume characters into the show, you know, especially for the holidays, because I don't see the puppets really performing like songs like Jasper saying, oh, up on the rooftop, or just doing Snowman once again like that. Like, okay, I don't, I don't see that happening. Right, and there's just, there's a lot of things you can do with puppets, and there's a lot of things you can't do with puppets, just like there's a lot of things you can do with costumes, and there's a lot of things you can't do. I just think... There would be a lot broader, there would be a lot more broad entertainment variety if they decided to go that route and incorporated the costumes into the shows alongside with the puppets. Right. Like right. sort of what they did in the, in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It doesn't have to be anything expensive. They could, they could green screen it all day, but uh, the fact that they're using it, and, and, the, and the, the views speak for itself, but the costume videos on the channel is what brings in most of the views. Right. If kids are drawn to the costumes than the puppets, then it would make sense to focus heavier on the costume content. <laughs> I totally agree with you. And, you know, it might not be the same because, you know, I guess the costume... Right. They, they couldn't just go back to form like how they were doing it in the old days. They'd have to adjust for the new style that they're going for. Right. But, um, you know, Jackie Jesus has, has been really growing, and Matt Daniel and his team is doing a great job from the programming, from the script writing, from the voicing to the shows. You know, he's just, it's the way of showing magic, and Matt Daniel does care for the fans very much. And, you know, like, like uh, Larry did say, they recorded the songs, and it might come back into the holiday show. Just think about... Like they did in the 40 Years of Fun show. They re-recorded Sick Out Every Got It. They re-recorded Chucky's Place. They re-recorded Every Boy Every Girl. Or officially named for it, Memories Every Day. Because I do agree with you, it does sound like a Memories Every Day. But... Fun fact. Matt Daniel officially changed the name to Memories Every Day. But was forced to change it back. Oh, I mean, honestly, it's 
sound like a memories every day though. I I'll be real with you. Cause yeah, he says memories every day in the song more than every boy, every girl. Yeah, it doesn't really had that point into it, but you know I don't have nothing against Matt Daniel decisions because like he said he got bosses, so. Right, he has to do what he has to do in order to keep his job, and I, I'm not going to interfere with that in any yeah, way. Yeah, not me either, but, you know, I do personally think Memories Every Day is more a better way of saying it, because, you know, it's just... And, well, today's kids uh, that don't know what Chuck E. Cheese is, will they really care what the name of the song is? No, because <laughs> no. they don't know. No. no. Oh, right. Really, the only ones that care or no is the band that's yeah. pretty much what he's doing most of this for nowadays like he doesn't cater to the bands but without the bands or previous knowledge of what once was half of the stuff in the Chuck E. Cheese shows would be completely different right and without us fans with our magic with whatever we're doing you know Matt Daniel wouldn't be here today doing all of this and he's working so hard and seeing what he gotta do to make production more better and alongside that is, even at Chucky Con, he told us fans to go out and make videos. Yes, He wants exactly. us to make videos these, like Chuckster Chat, like Chucky right. Talk Show. Yes. He wants us to get about Chucky Cheese. You know what? Other people are talking Actually, um, by the way, thank you, Matt Daniel, for uh, liking my page for posting the Chucky's fan, uh, Chucky's fan, you know. Yeah, guys, he did say make some videos about it. Like, Matt Daniel uh, suggestions. Like, I forgot you say, like, Matt Daniel suck. Not saying Matt Daniel suck because, say, like, Matt Daniel suck because X, Y, Z, you know. Make some you know what Daniel's doing, then you should speak on the way. Don't say, oh, I don't like what he's doing. Right. Say something he can do to improve the shows instead of just hating on it. He's saying, oh, Caroline Richardson sucks because she can't sing. That's right. not a good, feasible opinion to create. Because Caroline could improve her singing by doing this is more of a better way of going about it. In fact, I almost made a Chuck, uh, Chucky Soft Show talk about the Halloween show, but I was so glad I pushed that back. But, yeah, you know, like, like Matt Daniel did say, Chucky can't make videos about it, so... He can hear our voice because uh, another fun fact: Chuckster made a video about the Studio C of like what's wrong with it, and Fat Daniel took note. And what well, you know, like around show five, actually it was like another Chucky day. That was actually it was not another Chucky day or like uh, everybody every girl. Chuck's movement came really, really good. Or right, they um, they moved arm movements that they haven't done before. Used a lot more technical aspects of the show better pro like it, it's I can't put it into words but it, they do care they really do yes and you know Matt Daniel do cares about all of us fans out there and he loves each and every one of us and he'd do anything for us and hopefully in the near future we can get to see more great stuff you know anything's possible like they always say the future looks fun to me, so, I mean, right, you never say never, because you never know what they might decide to go and do, right, the next year, or the years of it, right, and, you know, they are already working on, they were working on show run since, like, show four, so, or show three, is like one of those two shows, but hey, anything is possible on the, Anything is possible. And, you know, for Matt Daniel and his team of entertainment, you watch this man. Shout out to you for doing a lot for us fans. And I can't wait to see what next year actually brings us. Right. And one of those things, I think he's been focusing a lot more on the live shows. Right. Especially because we bring live shows this year instead of our just usual one. Now we get, in, we get the holiday remixes of the current existing ones. Right. You know, because what brings in the views on the channel are primarily the walk around live show videos and videos that have the walk arounds in them. They do get a lot more views than the puppet videos. Like, there's some puppet videos that bring in views, but when you compare it to the walk around videos, they, they just don't compare. You don't right. see things like Cat City bringing in 5 million or 10 million views like the live show videos. Totally 
agree. You know, um, no. if they focused on that a lot more, put the walkarounds in the videos a lot more, then they would increase their view count, increase the subscriber count as well, and just generally grow the channel. Right, I can actually see that happening, and you know, anything is possible for Matt Daniel. But guys, expect some new stuff coming out next year for Chuck E. Cheese's. You know, might be different. Anything is possible. But, uh, you know, it's better than, like, you know, y'all complaining about a dance floor. But, you know, as always, not everything in Chuck E. Cheese is perfect. Some good, some bad. Just gotta set the changes. And expect what's coming out next year, because, you know, I'm always ready for a new change for Chuck E. Cheese's. And thanks again, Larry, for joining in. Of course, anytime. And hopefully we can get you in more into the future. Looking forward to it. So guys, go subscribe to his channel, check out some Chuckster Chats. And thank you guys for joining Season 1 of the Chucky's Talk Show. And we'll catch you guys later for Season 2, coming soon, next year, on the Cost and Cheese Entertainment official YouTube channel.